I'll just say a few words before I, well, I first, before I introduce the speakers. Although many of you must have seen the invitation which is sent out uh, by email. Have you? Uh, in that, I think there is an introduction given of the speakers as well. But uh, before I introduce the speakers, let me introduce this program because there are some new faces. And uh, this uh, idea of architecture and society started because there was some thought amongst the profession that there was not enough interface of the profession with general civil society and that it had become rather, uh, is this not a uh, bit closer? Oh, yes, that's better. Yeah. The idea was that architects by and large were not paying much attention to the society around them and were actually, you know, uh, working to, uh, for whatever reasons, but not quite making uh, uh, an influence in society around them. And we started off by sort of discussing amongst ourselves, having a discussion group, but then it had to be widened uh, because that was, it was not enough to discuss amongst architects. And not many architects were prepared to discuss uh, professional matters in an open manner. So we opened it and the IHC was kind enough to suggest that we could use their premises as an, and this would be thought of as a cultural event. So that um, uh, it was not a, um, a staged event in any sense, but a cultural event which we could hold month after month. And we've gone on doing that, surprisingly, because at first I thought it very difficult to find people who would be of general interest, architects or people concerned with architecture, who would be interesting enough for all kinds of people, not just architects and students of architecture. But surprisingly and fortunately, we have gone on for about more than four years, and I'm told this is the 55th meeting, uh, monthly meeting. Uh, um, so it is really a discussion group. And uh, since architecture is not just a specialization, I think it's one subject which is actually the best for general education. You get the best kind of general education as an architect. Uh, surprisingly, though architects don't practice very much in terms of their general education, right? You can't, I can't say the same of, the, of my speakers today because they obviously have devoted their attention to something which is of general interest and of great benefit, I should imagine, to society as a whole. So uh, both architects and um, uh, I'm told not teaching anymore. I have done some teaching. But I think the work that they are doing, which they'll tell us about, appears to be concerned very much with education. And uh, so in a sense, they are within the whole educational uh, world in a very central manner. So without more uh, explanation. I think I'll leave it to them to put before you their thoughts and the presentation that they have prepared. We both will be presenting uh, our journey uh, of uh, what we have been doing in the in the social space so far. And uh, one of the things we would like to say is that uh, we are going to share about the Anganwadis in schools and perhaps some of you may not know about Anganwadis and we'll briefly tell about that as well. These are like preschools but not actually preschools because these are really uh, service delivery points for health, nutrition, early childhood care and preschool education. So their domain is actually much larger than, larger than preschools and uh, uh, what we feel is that uh, Anganwadis and schools are more than just shelters for service, service deliveries. Uh, they are very important places for children in many ways and they are caregivers and teachers to explore, discover and develop their true, true potential for life. Uh, as architects, we feel that it is very important and critical to develop these spaces uh, in that manner. We are also convinced that the best way to reach out to a large number of diverse children across the country is to work with the government system and communities. And which is why the title that you have uh, right there. Uh, uh, we'll show you a, a video clip. Thank you. 
Now this is a window of security grill which is modified only at the child's accessible level uh, in an existing Anganwadi in Bastar district of Chhattisgarh. It helps in developing eye and hand coordination of the fine motor muscles of young children. It actually also links with the national curriculum framework for early childhood care and preschool education. It uses local materials, skills and crafts. It uses very frugal resources. It is also a product of interdisciplinary process of child development, architecture, engineering, administration, finance and accounts, and capacity development. This is a uh, barrel wheel which has been uh, designed by the headmaster of a school in a village called Fareda, uh, which is near Gate Forest, a very remote village. And uh, you know there there was a lot of problem of uh, absenteeism in the school, and which uh, the headmaster really wanted to make the whole uh, the school more child centric, so that you know more children. Uh, you know, there, there is better retention of children in the school. So uh, he worked on a lot of ideas in the outdoor spaces in the school, and this was one of the innovations that he did. And as you can see, I mean, it is, uh, you know, it is not just about the fun, fun element, but uh, uh, it addresses the, uh, you know, the, all the domains of child development. There is an element of social development, uh, because there is a teamwork that has to be uh, done. There is an element of emotional development because, you know, a uh, child has to, you know, learn to take the challenge of doing it. Then, of course, it requires a lot of physical skills, so physical de development as well. And the cognitive side also is addressed because it requires a lot of scientific principles. Of course, they can come later.